I'm terribly sorry for today's video being super late. I've just been really busy with school as I've restarted that, so I've had less time to film. On top of, I did not expect the actual amount of effort this project took. Um, I'm still working on it. It's not complete. So this has been over like a week, close to a week and a half of effort, whereas I can normally do stuff within a couple days. So I just have to learn how to budget in my time accordingly. So today's project is part one of two of me making a 16th century German hemd, which is like a shirt, but for menswear. Um, I'm making a courtesan suit, which I'm going to be calling a courtier because there is less evidence for a courtesan, especially a male courtesan in German court. Um, but I'm saying courtier the same way that people say being an accountant if they have an OnlyFans. So yeah. It's been a really fun project so far, it's especially to research, and yeah, let's get right into it. For this overarching project, I wanted to do a late period challenge, as well as something a little vampiric. I love my Viking Age stuff, but there's just something about the opulence of the 16th century. From there onwards, that's where it goes downhill in men's fashion, in my opinion. It comes back a little bit in the 18th century with the over-the-top embroidered waistcoats and Scottish kilts, but otherwise it's just meh. The reason I chose to do German over English or French is because I seem to be a masochist. All jokes aside, I had some SEA friends who care about the same level of authenticity I do, so they swayed me over to the German side. German is probably one of the more harder ones to research because, besides visual aids like paintings, as English is my only fluent language. I am learning Welsh, but that's more of a beginner subject than anything. With the lack of resources being in English, it's really hard to find anything besides translated stuff, and the people that do translate things, it's a bit too hard to find as well as that. I've only found vague talkings of German sumptuary laws, that were translated into English because someone was just blogging in English and English wasn't even their first language. They were just talking about how they found this book and were just kind of vaguely going around the topic without having to go in depth or detail, but I still use this kind of as a source to base my stuff off, even though it was more geared to women. I will link all my sources and everything I used down below. I wanted more of a fancier courtesan suit, as there's more evidence of courtesanship in this time period of the 16th century, especially in Italy. More so than there is in the Viking Age. Unfortunately, there is even less evidence of male courtesans or escorts in Germany than there are of female ones, so I am going more off of a courtier and a courtier is defined on Wikipedia as a person who attends at the royal court of a monarch or other royalty. The earliest historical examples of courtiers were part of the retinues of rulers. Historically, the court was the center of government as well as official residence of the monarch, and the social and political life were often completely mixed together. Though, while that is for an accurate job description, I am saying courtier, like how people with OnlyFans say they are an accountant. The part I'm making today is the shirt. Shirts in the 1500s go looking less like the tunics of previous times and become more like the shirts of early modern centuries with proper cuffs and collars. See the examples given here in the Tudor Tailor. Some even have ties, and I really like that, so I incorporated that as well. For my shirt, I chose to do a smocked collar, as we have paintings and other forms of art from the German area with smocked collars. Like these, a few from the Trachtenbuch des Matthias Schwartz aus Osberg, 1520 to 1560. I am very sorry for the terrible pronunciation of that, but the translation of this book is the traditional costume by Matthias Schwartz from Osberg. There is this bust as well but this bust seems to have more of a honeycomb smocking going on rather than the straightforward gathered ones that I am doing today. These gathers I'm doing are featured on this painting of Albrecht von Prusen, the first Duke of Prussia, especially around the collar. For these paintings and busts, you can't see much of the sleeve cuffs, so I am taking a kind of guess as what they would be doing but I also decided to apply the smocking there as to the cuffs. 
I have yet to find out why smocking was popular in Germany, but detailed by the High Belt Smocking Guild in South Africa, smocking began in England in the 13th or 14th century. It consisted of linen fabric which was gathered into pleats, and then the pleats were secured with embroidery stitches. Wikipedia also adds other major embroidery styles are purely decorative and representative in status symbols. Smocking later became associated with the working class, as it was able to create form-fitting designs, but allowing ease of movement with the synthesized stretch of the fabric on the gathered thread. I thought the research part of this project took the longest, but I thought wrong. It is the whole gathering. It wasn't until 1940s when a smocking machine was invented. Once I got a basis for what I wanted the pattern to look like and kind of what directions I had, I made sure that the measurements to the person's instructions fit me uh, because it was basically the width of your fabric versus various length. And ultimately, I think I should have left mine a little bit longer or like the same length as theirs was 95 centimeters long and I chose to do mine 85. Here, I'm also measuring my neck because I need to make sure that the band that holds all of the ruffles in place is that wide. As the instructions that I'm going off of, and these are linked down below, the instructions are going off the width of the fabric rather than the width of your body. So I'm just making sure or measuring how wide my fabric is so I can adjust the pattern that way. Mine was 10 centimeters too uh, short. Theirs was 150, mine was 140. So adjusting for those measurements, halfway is 70 centimeters. Uh, instead of the 75 that is provided. giving this uh, fabric a little bit of an iron as when it was hung up on the line. Um, it has a crease down the middle of it. It's a very loose weave, loose weave linen, so it rumples a bit easy. I'm not going to be too worried about how smooth to keep it, so my main concern was this big line that was right down the center, uh, as that was the most noticeable. steps into construction were actually this thread drawing bit. Um, since this was such a loose weave linen that I had, keeping all of my lines nice and precise was a key thing, and this took very long even though the mark for this section that I'm showing is just the neckline, and as you can see this is, this is not sped up, this is full time. Um, I'm not going to make you watch this entire thing as it would be the entire length of the video, but yes. So what I ended up having to do 
was thread draw across the fabric for the top, like sorry, the front and the back pieces, and then same length but down the middle of the fabric for the sleeves to cut them into two. And that was for everything, including the gussets, because I just wanted everything to be nice and pristine and precise. And since this was such a precise process, I had to use my little snips versus my large fabric scissors as the fabric scissors were hard to see um, the line that the thread drawing created. So it was kind of hard to stay on track for small lines. So again, more time to just precisely snip all of these pieces apart. As I got all of the pieces cut out, I had to go in and then finish the top edge and the bottom edge for all of the pieces, including the sleeves, as the top edge, uh, once everything was constructed and sewn together, would be smocked and gathered down to create the collar piece. So it wasn't an additional add-on, um, as it was just kind of like made from these pieces of fabric coming together. Next, I'm just marking a 30 centimeter line to, uh, as a guideline to sew all of the pieces together. As I mentioned before, the sleeves and the body pieces just got sewn together. There are uh, gussets that were inserted as well, but this was just the basic construction process. Once all of the seams were finished, I took the sleeve edges, um, and since these ones are the ones where my wrist would be coming out of, I decided to mark a three centimeter gap from where the edge of the sleeve is to where I would start my smocking grid. Um, this created a very lovely ruffle, and it's very nice and extra, especially since uh, your boy is... And here is the smocking grid. This has become the bane of my existence. It 
it's such a pain in the ass to deal with. I, yeah. Um, so essentially this is a grid that is one centimeter by one centimeter uh, with 11 rows of dots. And so what I have to do now is I have to dot every single dot for the edge of the rest of this edge and then once I'm finished I get to go and sew which will be the next step. This was the part of the process that was not too bad as it went by pretty quick. Um, all I essentially had to do was stitch under the few millimeters that were like where the dot is and this created deep but narrow pl uh, like little pleats or gathers um, and this was the majority of the smocking that was found in 16th century paintings and stuff. Of course like there is honeycomb smocking in some instances and everything like that but even this photo of the Duke of Prussia first Duke of Prussia, you can see all of his nice, smooth smocks. And both of these sleeves took me, like, if you compiled all of the time together, like, about a day. Um, it just, it was like just constantly doing the same rows over and over. And it's 11 rows of, on 80, sorry, not 80 centimeters. It's 11 rows of 70 centimeters that have to get gathered down to 20 centimeters. So, yay.
So once all of the rows were sewn in, I took the fabric piece over to my iron as I used a friction pen to mark all the dots so I could just iron them away. And that was actually really nice to watch. And the gathering process, which is actually fairly neat to see, um, the only thing is is that I kind of had a hard time containing or like keeping the edge with all of the threads coming out of it in a nice tight uh, loop, um, as it just didn't have that thing that was just containing it, like the far edge or the knots on the edge.
I didn't show the cutting out of these, but here are the facings. They're just two width, so in this case it is 20 centimeters. Um, now I'm just going to pin it to the uh, smocked areas, so that way it just kind of holds everything in place without it wiggling around. Um, this was just fun to do because it was just getting little itty bitty edges to this little bracer band type of thing. Um, other than that, it's just fairly easy. Once the facing was finished being sewn down, I went through with a large needle to uh, gather a couple of different threads together, have them waxed, and then kind of tucked the tails in to the edge. Um, these edges were going to get finished as I also added finger loop braids to help tie them. And here I'm showing finishing the edge as well as sewing in the finger loop braids that I made off camera. These I uh, made to help tie these sleeves closed. I just thought it would be like a really nice touch as to more of a higher class shirt this is. 
so it wouldn't exactly be me dressing myself even though I would and I can totally tie them on my own And this is the finished shirt sleeve. I mainly wanted to focus on the smocking aspect of rather than construction. Um, so all of the inside seams and the construction seams have been finished and completed off camera. Uh, here are the ties I was talking about and I mentioned not needing help being able to tie them and voila, self tie. Done and done, simple as that.